Hi everybody, I am that nursing prop and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about hypovolemic shock. So let's get into it. So hypovolemic shock is caused by severe blood or fluid loss. And this is significant enough that it makes the heart unable to pump enough blood to the body. And we can see that in the name. So hypo meaning low or decreased and volume. So low volume of fluid, low volume of blood in the body. The risk factors for this are being elderly. The elderly are more prone to dehydration and then anything causing sort of trauma. So this could be something like a wound, a gunshot wound, or even something like surgery, right? There's trauma involved in surgery. There's blood loss with that. So those are our big risk factors. Our most common causes, excessive fluid loss from diuresis, excessive vomiting or diarrhea, so lots and lots of fluid loss from that, burns, Hemorrhage, that's the big one we think of, right? All of that blood loss. Diabetes insipidus and dehydration. So the way this is actually working in the body, so that decrease in volume leads to a decrease in venous return, which causes a decrease in filling pressure of the heart, which causes a decrease in stroke volume. And we know stroke volume affects cardiac output. So low stroke volume leads to low cardiac output. And then low cardiac output leads to low tissue perfusion. So all of this is basically saying there's not enough blood for the heart to pump out to the rest of the body. So that was what leads to that decreased tissue perfusion. When it comes to signs and symptoms, it really depends on the percentage of blood that has been lost. But a helpful mnemonic, so you can remember some of these signs and symptoms, is CHART. So C is for the urine is very concentrated, right, because we have low fluid volume. They're going to be cyanotic, and then their capillary refill time is going to be longer, and that is reflective of that poor tissue perfusion. They're going to be hypotensive because of the less blood volume. They might be anxious, right, because they're in shock, right, this is very scary. So anxiety, they might have an altered level of consciousness, so they might be unconscious. And then an altered heart rhythm, so if this gets really bad, they can have a dysrhythmia. They could have a rapid or weak, hard-to-find pulse, a thready pulse, like a plus one. Reduced urinary output, because at the moment, right, the body is trying to preserve all of the volume and fluid that it has, so it's really not trying to get a lot of output there. And there's not a lot to come out. And then finally, the T, they can have an increased temperature, so they'll have a fever, um, and they're going to be tachycardic. Tachycardia and hypotension are kind of those like hallmark signs of shock when you think of somebody in shock. So these patients with hypovolemic shock, they're going to have that. When it comes to nursing interventions for these patients, it's going to depend. So how much of a percentage of volume has been lost and what was the cause? So some things that we could do for these patients. First, we're going to find out, okay, what is the cause of the bleeding? Where is this bleeding coming from? So look for sources of bleeding. Of course, frequently we're going to be assessing those vitals, right? So assessing vitals, urinary output, level of consciousness, skin color, and turgor. We're going to be doing that frequently to note for changes. These patients are going to have two IVs. So one is going to be for fluid, and the second is going to be a just-in-case IV if we need to do blood along with fluid to keep that volume up. So two IVs. We're going to put them in modified Trendelenburg's position. Basically, we want them flat on their back, but with their legs elevated. And what that's going to do is going to bring more blood flow to the heart. We're going to give them high levels of oxygen. They might even need to be intubated and ventilated. We're going to keep them warm. Labs that we're going to draw, ABGs, um, hemoglobin hematocrit. We're going to check their lactate level, a CMP for those electrolytes, their BUN, and their creatinine. When it comes to fluids, normal saline or lactated ringers are going to be our fluids of choice. We can also give packed red blood cells to replace any you know, lost blood volume, platelets, and fresh frozen plasma. 
And then another thing I wanted to add, because it is important, is we need to be supportive of these patients. Remember, they are anxious. If they are conscious, they're going to be kind of, you know, upset and freaking out and afraid. Like, oh my God, what's going on, right? This is a very scary thing. So being supportive and being there, being a patient advocate, is really important for our patients who are in hypovolemic shock. When it comes to managing that fluid replacement, the normal saline or the lactated ringers, we have to follow something called the three to one rule. So the three to one rule for crystalloids, that's what those are. So normal saline, lactate ringers, those are crystalloid solutions. So what this means is for every one ml of blood loss, we should replace it with three mls of crystalloids. So for every one ml, we're gonna do three mls to give. A couple of things to keep in mind here. First, that estimated blood loss. In a perfect world, we would know the exact amount of blood loss. We would know how many mLs, we would weigh our pads, things like that. But in an emergent situation, that's not always possible. We cannot get an exact amount, so we're going to have to guess. We're going to have to approximate. So that's why this is estimated blood loss. So we want that to be pretty close to the truth, right? For it to make sense and for it to be safe, what we're going to give as replacement. So. Keep that in mind, we want the most accurate estimation. And then also the size of the person, right? So if your patient is a small child, okay? Maybe they're three feet tall, they're 40 pounds, and they lose 20% of their blood volume. Versus a large adult who's, you know, 6'5", they're 300 pounds, they lose 20% of their blood volume. It's not gonna be the same because the patients aren't the same size. So just a couple things to keep in mind. We want our most accurate estimate that we can have and the uh, size of the patient also comes into play with this. So that's the three to one rule for crystalloids. And that was my video on hypovolemic shock. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.